very warm welcome to Monet Cafe for today's tutorial where I will be taking the mystery hopefully out of painting clouds and this is the painting that I um, did for this demonstration and I hope you will join me where I give lots of information and I'm even going to keep this real time. For this painting I used a surface that I love. It's a product made by Sennelier. They also make pastels. It's called Pastel Card, Le Carte Pastel, and it's thicker. I really like the thickness and it also comes in this pad with these beautiful colors. Um, I love the texture of this. I think it works well for painting clouds. It helps me to keep a light touch. Uh, this is the reference photo I used. It happens to be a, uh, a field on my parents' property that I take multiple photos because the sky is always changing. That's the beautiful thing about God's palette. You know, he paints us these beautiful skies that are constantly changing in color and mood. So join me now for a preliminary tutorial before I get to the painting discussing painting clouds. All right, so our sun is our source of light. Anything near the sun is obviously going to be lighter and it's going to be warmer in color temperature. But right away, I wanna talk about something with clouds that I think uh, maybe perhaps was something that I did early on. Uh, I can't remember, it's been so long. But I've definitely seen art like this, what I'm about to describe. Sometimes people have a tendency to just think of the sky as going up in this direction. In other words, um, and I'm not going to draw it here, but any clouds close to the sun are going to be warmer and lighter, and then as they go away from the sun, they get cooler and darker. Okay, anything far away from the sun is going to be darker in value and cooler in color temperature, okay, typically in the skies. All right, so of course it does work this way, but often we forget. I, I see a lot of people do skies where it's all painted in a just a vertical perspective. And often, um, maybe when you're just starting with this, we forget that the sky is, or the clouds are coming at us too, okay? In other words, we've got perspective happening here, all right? So we've got clouds that are, that might be here, as in this one here, it's not way back there. It's almost over our head. There's obviously some over our head that you can't see in a picture. And I love paintings where you get the, the image almost or um, the impression almost of seeing the ones right above your head. I wanted to make a quick point here that obviously there are different types of skies. Not all the clouds come right at you like my painting, but here is a very wonderful little demonstration that is on the Faber-Castell, Faber-Castell pastel uh, website. It gives you a wonderful demonstration, even including the colors to use and step-by-step. -step. So you might wanna check out this uh, particular uh, website and find their tutorial. It has a great, great lesson on painting clouds. All right, back to my lesson. So we're dealing with perspective here. The clouds are receding, okay? And if that's the case, we know that if, if things are lighter near the sun and darker further away, obviously these clouds like these are further away. They're not on a flat plane um, just going up. They're coming out. I hope that makes sense, okay? So let me draw some of these babies in here. Um, and as much as I don't want you, um, I have a pet peeve, uh, you know, whatever, people tend to think of clouds like this, and they draw them like that, all right? And uh, then think, okay, now we color them in, and now we draw our little silver lining around them, you know, whatever. So what I'm going to do right now is um, going to sound like that's what I'm doing, but it's just to make a point, that I, and then I'll tell you how to approach painting them afterwards. All right, so clouds... I, kn I know there are names like cumulus and all that. I'm not going to name them that. This is just for art purposes. There's thick clouds, medium clouds, and light clouds, okay? Some of these that are the real dark ones, they're going to be your thick clouds. They're very dense. Light doesn't get through them very much, okay? These are your, you know, they're kind of like the ones that rain comes out of, okay? So we've got our clouds coming from far away, and they're getting closer to us in perspective, all right? And these are our, our thicker clouds, okay? So I'm just going to give an example of that. Then we've got our medium clouds. This one's kind of almost coming up above your head here, okay? Remember, these aren't way back there. These are getting closer, okay? And this one is going to be kind of like my medium cloud, okay? All right, so, and I'm going to give an indication of how to approach that in a minute. Then we've got our thin, wispy clouds. There's some of them back here, okay? 
I'm just going to give a little indication of these wispy ones, kind of like right here, okay? All right, so our thicker clouds that are more opaque and more dense, um, and there's actually some down kind of underneath here too, they're going to be darker, okay? Because they're thicker. Now, I'm going to, I think I'll try to do this with just value. I might add color in a second, okay? So these are thicker, okay? And I've got some that they're still kind of wispy, but um, maybe I do need to do color. Let me do some color here, okay? That's going to help a lot. First of all, let's get the sun. Let's get it all nice and warm, okay? Sun's, but it's far away, all right? Um, and of course, near the sun, you're going to have color temperatures that are warmer. You can add some oranges. Anything, whatever's the closest to the sun, I don't have a super light light. Let me find something that's a little lighter. The sun is going to be the lightest thing, okay, and light that's around it. And you don't have to draw a sun like a circle. In my painting, there's no circle here. This is just a, a mass of light, okay? Um, and then as it starts moving away, you can start getting a little more oranges and things. You're starting to see that. But then the value is going to get, um, or the, the color chroma is going to get more dull, more neutral out here. So let me see if I can find. This is a more neutral yellow it's not bright like that so that's the sun way back here you're getting these more neutral colors far away so lighter warmer and typically a little more intense i even in my painting i even added some of this pink you know i just liked that see that's a little bolder whatever okay so closer to the sun but keep in mind that sun is way back there okay now again as we get our mass clouds our thicker ones they're going to be darker in value and because this cloud is coming closer to you it's going to be darker in value and cooler in color temperature rather than warm it's not way back there where the sun is okay um, now this one up here is a little more wispy let me see if I can find a lighter um, color and typically um, I don't draw them I just again I just drew these for the purpose of you see them seeing them. I, I did a little sketch at the beginning of this painting just with willow charcoal, but then I just start using the sides of my pastel, okay? So this one's a little more wispy, but it's still, it's got some mass to it. It's a little solid. It kind of goes over here, okay? And then we've got another one. I'm going to go ahead and draw in the sky we know. The sun way back there is still illuminating the sky. That's why the sky is so bright. It's on top of these clouds, even though it doesn't look like it. The sun way back there is still on top of these clouds. And we've got our sky, the brightness of the sky showing through, but keep in mind, the sky is working in this case anyway, just like a lot of sky pictures do, where it's darker up towards the heavens, okay? And it's a little bit darker towards some of the clouds, so I don't have a great dark here, but, um, but it's going to be a little bit darker up in the upper heavens, up in here, okay? All right, so, isn't that beautiful? <laughs> Okay, so um, now in here is where we've got wispy clouds, kind of like right here, but they're a little warmer in color temperature. Let me see if I can find a, that's too, no, I need, I need more warmth than that. I had one that worked pretty good. I think it's this one right here. See, this is more of a, it's probably, no, it's not, maybe not too dark in value. And remember again, these things are, clouds are coming towards you. They're not just going up like a stairs or elevator. All right, and we've got some um, what is this here? That's a massive cloud. There's a mass. Okay, let me get some more of these colors in here. We got like some um, cooler temperatures again. These blues are cool. I got some blues in here. I see a cooler blue here. Cooler blues back here. Okay, and we got a little bit of that um, sky coming through here. But notice now. Here's where I'm getting to my point here. Notice um, that's a little too warm there. Notice that through these clouds, where they get thin in between them. There's light from the sun way back there shining through. It's not going to be as intense. It's not going to be as warm, okay? But it's still going to have a little uh, a little warmth to it, okay? Let me see if I can find a good color here. In my, it's not showing up great here. In my painting, I used something similar to this for those little places where it's just kind of peeking through. But anyway, okay, so we've got these um, places in... Um, uh, a sky landscape where you're looking at the clouds and you can see the light from the sun is going to uh, shine through wherever the clouds are kind of thin 
um, but you're going to deal with the color temperature and the lightness or darkness the same way okay so i happen to see it's a little there's like a little break in between these two clouds it's almost like it's um one cloud that's got some thinness kind of in here all right and it was uh actually it's like right in here so let me get some more dark going on down here um, all right and we got the dark dark cloud down here and i left that little break right there and so that's where that little thinness is so wherever that is it you we might have a tendency to just get one of these lighter colors oh the sun's shining through it let's do this and it's that's too warm and it's too light okay so it's good to get something that is a little duller a little more neutral let's see if i can find a duller neutral color that i had here for the sky yeah well i'll just use this one just for the heck of it this one's you know it's a little bit more pink but it's a little darker in value than the one that i had used before so you're going to have the sun shining through in places like that and you just kind of base your value and your temperature on how thick is the cloud and how close is it to the sun okay there's a little more warmth down in here you know see how this is this is warmer because it's back there on the horizon now notice how cool this gets back up in here this is cooler because um, these clouds are getting closer to you and um, they're further away from the sun okay so there's a there's a mess for you right there how about that <laughs> now also too i had done a um let me get a dark here just to do some uh, trees i had done like my um my tree line here and uh let me get it down further here Okay, and now the same thing happens with regards to your, um, what the sky is reflecting down onto the land and onto the trees. These trees real far away, obviously they're getting more sunlight way back there than these trees over here. And of course, too, you're dealing with um, just perspective in general, how things lighten in value, how they go back, and they're darker in value, how they come forward. So you're going to get a little bit more of that reflected sunlight on those background trees. You don't see it as much in photographs, but you can kind of exaggerate it a little bit. You know, you can kind of um, give a little, um, I even did, I think, one of like maybe these kind of pinkish kind of colors back here. Just to kind of make those trees look warmer and far. Now, typically things cool off when they get further away, but in this case, they're closer to the sun, so they got a little bit more warmth to it back there I wanted to look like that sun's just kind of shining on some of the stuff back there okay and now the same thing with your with your land um, let me just get a general color down here real fast I'll just get kind of a basic medium value green okay we've got our our land I, I kind of did my strokes perspectively to just kind of enhance that when I was painting it kind of give you that sense of depth by bringing this clouds this way and your land this way um, but the same thing this land way far away again I don't see that in my photograph but I know it's going to um, just look more dynamic and dramatic if I enhance that in the uh, in the ground back there this is probably a little too dark yeah I need some a little bit lighter than that this is going to be too light probably but you'll get the idea so I just kind of lighten up some of the land back there sometimes i'll make a little spot that's kind of peeking through okay that is definitely too light um but there's an orange that's better okay so same thing that's where the sun is okay and then you don't want to bring it all the way up here because the sun's way back there all right i added in the shadowy areas of the grass under these trees these are much closer to me some cooler purples okay which um, kind of brought those more forward. This one's not quite so close. It's like these trees are a little closer than these trees are. Okay, and then I even added, I think some of this blue in there. Look how pretty, if you get value right, you know, you're good. So, um, so anyway, there's a messy cloud demo. So to recap, thicker clouds are more opaque. They're darker in value. 
and um, uh, and depending on where they are to the sun, they're going to be cooler in color temperature, thinner wispy clouds, um, or medium clouds, I should say. There's more of a medium one there. Okay, are going to be not as opaque. All right, and depending on where they are to the sun, they're either going to be warmer or cooler in color temperature. I use the same one for those wispy, smoky clouds. You're just barely going to use your uh, pastel on the side for those types of clouds, okay? But main thing to keep in mind is clouds come towards you, okay? They're coming over your head. They're not way back there in the, uh, not all of them are so, so far away back there. Okay, so now I'm getting carried away. I'm just gonna keep on working on this. <laughs> so don't work on plain paper like this, okay? <laughs> Hopefully that, that made a point. But again, don't draw cloud shapes. I mean, you can draw out kind of where they are as an initial sketch, but don't, don't draw the lines, okay? You just um, use the side of your pastel and continue to blend. Keep a light touch at first, and remember to keep those clouds coming over your head. Let them reach towards you. All right, so now to the painting tutorial. All right, now I'm getting started on my Sennelier LeCarte paper. This is just a little piece of willow charcoal that I am using just to get in a super basic uh, idea of kind of where things are. I'm not necessarily drawing the little uh, puffy cloud shapes. I'm just drawing more shapes to kind of uh, give me a little guide as to where to go when I start painting. Um, I am again creating this sense of depth perspectively and I want to reiterate with that little demo that I just did on regular paper uh, not all skies behave this particular way but we do want to keep in mind that often the clouds are coming over ahead we want to enhance that um, perspective um, point uh, and I think it makes a, a dynamic painting but you know keep in mind <clears throat> where your clouds are now I am using just the side of a Terry Ludwig pastel here and I'm going ahead and getting some warmth on the ground but I'm going to be adding multiple colors of the same value it's just going to create more interest um, now I'm using more like a, um, a forest green and I'm working as always big shapes to small shapes you, you don't start doing the detail less detail to more detail so all of this is really called the blocking in stage and once again this is real time okay this other than the little sketch part I just did the whole rest of this video is going to be real time I'm going to try to talk a lot <clears throat> until I get monotonous saying the same thing over and over again um, now this I'm blocking in the tree line. Uh, the tree line is going to be the darkest thing in the painting. Now if you notice the reference photo up there, um, it is uh, dynamic of course and I love the light and the values, but often if you try to just totally copy your photograph, you're going to miss some of the opportunity to make a more beautiful painting. We can use our artistic license to enhance some things, so what I'm going to enhance is I'm gonna take away the dullness in in a little while, not right away, but I'm gonna take away the kind of boring dark value of that land, you know, that's before the trees. But for right now, I'm just getting in uh, my basic values um, before uh, getting too fussy or too detailed on anything. Um, I wanna point out also uh, that if you make the mistake of just working on one little section of your painting and getting everything just right and you don't block it in and get your basic values in um, you may have your painting end up not being very cohesive with your value and your color but mostly your value because uh, a big point is that value and color is dependent upon what is around it okay so if I was to keep working here I'm gonna now I'm this is my point. Now I'm gonna start getting in some of my lighter values. I got my darkest tree line value in there, uh, preliminary anyway, and now I'm gonna start getting in some of my lighter values because that uh, light is going to, the lightness or darkness of something is dependent upon what's next to it. So I hope that makes sense. Let me give you a little example here, a lesson here real quick. 
Now, I don't mean to wear you guys out with value, but it really is that important. What is it? It's the different shades of gray between white and black. And notice here, they've actually gotten this one numbered correctly. The higher the number, the lighter the value. Some value scales get that backwards. All right, let's take a look at this example. Now, it's pretty easy to see the two different values of these two adjoining squares. Now, in the middle of these squares, a another value is placed across it. That's the same value in that middle rectangle. What happens if we kind of block the transition uh, by putting this white square in between? Let me pause it here. Now, if you were to take your hand or something and cover up the one side, uh, the gray square that is now covered by the white square, the one in the middle, you'll see the insert actually appears to be two different values, but it is only because of the value it is adjacent to. That's my point, is that value is dependent upon what it is next to. So take a look at this next example to clearly see this is the same color swatch or value swatch laid across all of the different values on the value scale. And notice how what appears to be a darker value in the lighter squares ends up looking like a lighter value in the darker squares. So back to my point about getting your values overall laid in or blocking them in along with your colors is a good idea at the start because you may, if you get too uh, carried away with one particular part of your painting or area, you may get your values incorrect because again, value is dependent upon what it is next to and so is color but I'll share that demonstration for another lesson. Now, I will discuss exactly what I'm talking about here the more that the painting progresses. It'll be easier for you to understand when I get some of these values laid in. So right now, all I'm doing, notice is I'm just, uh, I'm keeping a light touch, first of all. I don't want anything to get too, too detailed, too overly, um, uh, saturated with pastels. I want to keep layering ability. In other words, I don't want to have a hard pressing touch, um, but I'm keeping it all very light because, you know, contrary to what some people may think, um, you can uh, change a painting. I mean, I don't actually go in here and erase anything. Um, sometimes I actually do with a paintbrush, but you can layer over something um, to kind of alter it if you feel like something's not right. But that's why this light touch really helps. What I'm doing right now is still establishing value, color, and specifically color temperature. Again, I am looking right now at where those warmer colors are kind of peeking through. And I'm giving myself what I call um, color notes or pastel notes. I'm, I'm getting things down uh, just in general. And as a general rule, I may put down a color uh, that may be a little bit more bold than I want, but I can always tone that down by layering over it. Also, I typically, especially when I get to some of those uh, darker clouds, I typically put down a value that is darker than I want uh, because I go back over it and soften it uh, with another color on top. I'll talk about that in a minute too. Okay, so now here's where I'm working with a more neutral tone um, or pastel because these wispy clouds or whatever um, uh, thickness of these clouds are way back there, they're far away and they are closer to the sun, but they're not directly next to the sun, like some of those, um, and I know the sun is very, very far away. None of these clouds are super close to the sun, but they're closer um, than some of the other ones from our visual perspective. Um, so that's why I'm making the color temperatures cooler in temperature as they move away, a little duller in color, because of course, we know that color wouldn't exist without light. So that's why things that are closer to sources of light typically um, can have uh, bolder color or uh, more clear color. I mean, it, of course, if the light is super blinding, you can't see anything. But, you know, just for an example, in a dark room, you can't see any color until you turn the light on. So, um, so that's why these colors are dulling out um, and losing their warmth 
and getting darker in value the further away they get from the sun. If I can uh, impress anything upon you is is just that, is to uh, keep in mind the source of light and where everything is in relation to it and the rules of nature, really. I mean, these are the rules of art, but this is the rules, um, you know, that God has established for our earth is just how things operate. So as artists, we need to emulate those rules to be able to create a believable three-dimensional uh, piece of art. And that's pretty much the goal in um, two-dimensional art is uh, we're trying to create that illusion uh, in landscape painting, of course, but of a three-dimensional uh, visual that we've seen on a two-dimensional surface. So these that's one of the things I love about art. It really is about illusion kind of like that little illusion illustration I gave about value. I mean, you're learning, I don't always like the word tricks, but you're learning the tricks of the trade and, and how to make these things work. And, and these are learnable. You know, I know some people do have more gifts in certain uh, creative ways than others. You know, some people just naturally can architecturally draw things. They just kind of see it. It's a gift God's given them. Um, but almost all of these things are learnable. If you've got a passion for art, um, and don't get frustrated if you don't know it right away. You're going to have a whole lot of bad paintings. Um, I still have bad paintings <laughs> that I'm like, oh, I'm throwing that one away or I'm not going to make a video of that. <laughs> so um, it's a lot of trial and error, uh, but just keep trying to enjoy the journey. Um, that's the main thing. It's like, And don't feel disappointed when something doesn't come out. Feel uh, accomplished that, wow, look what I learned from this, even if um, it didn't uh, result in something that you're super pleased with. You know, that's how everything works. It's just perseverance and keep trying. Now, see how I'm using the side of this um, uh, Terry Ludwig pastel that I've broken in half, by the way. I often break them in half. They're sometimes just a little bit too long to accomplish some of the things I wanna do. Now, this is an example of where I went a little bolder in color. Um, that one's a little more neutral, far away. I got a more neutral blue because it's, you know, further from the sun. Um, but those bolder colors, uh, I'm actually going to darken them up a little bit more. Um, I'm going to uh, dull them out as the painting progresses. While I do want some vivid color, I don't want it to look surreal, you know. I know there's some art that does that. Sometimes my paintings actually are a little surreal with color. But for this, I, I wanted it to look believable. So those clouds, by the time I finish... They're not gonna be that high chroma blue. They're gonna be a little more grayed down than here. But do you notice how I haven't, you know, once I've started painting here, I haven't made a cloud shape really with a line. There are no lines in this. Um, I wanna point out here too that this blue that I'm laying in that's up in the heavens, of course it's gonna be lighter in value because this is above where the clouds are and the sun even though it's setting its brilliant light is still illuminating the sky you know it's a it's not as as bright as a bright middle of the day sky but it's still pretty bright and what i'm doing is again i'm still getting in just color and value right now but in time um the, this blue sky will end up being um the background for some of those really wispy clouds that are kind of far away. Uh, I don't put them in first. I put them in on top of that. Kind of like, you know, when we do flower paintings sometimes, some of your bigger flowers you go ahead and you put in, but you put your smaller ones in the background um, later on top of the grasses, you know, kind of just gently um, glazing over it. So it's kind of the same concept with wispy clouds that are far away. You don't really have to draw them in first. Um, you kind of just scumble or layer them in a bit over the sky. I hope that made sense. Okay, now the sky does have different um, uh, values in it as well. The background sky I'm talking about, the ones that's high up in the heaven there. Um, it's going to have some, notice the where I was working right there in between those two clouds, if you look in the reference photo, if you squint your eyes, it gets a little lighter in that area. Uh, as you get down um, closer to the earth, you know, uh, closer to where the sun is, is um, setting and not as high in the heavens, but those higher parts right there, see I'm, I'm using a darker blue 
I call it the heavenlies, okay? The Bible talks about there being three heavens, actually. Um, the first heaven is our sky that we see. Um, the second heaven is kind of like the outside of our atmosphere that, you know, is um, where we can't see past our own atmosphere with our human eye. And the third is um, the sides of the north, the Bible calls it. It's, a, it's the place where God resides. Of course, God is everywhere, um, but it is somewhere that is his spiritual dwelling place, where Christ said that uh, I go to prepare a place for you, that where I am, you may be, may be also. Um, anyway, I hope you guys don't get burnt out on I just think, you know what, how can I not talk about our creator <laughs> when I am emulating his creation, right? <laughs> it's like, wow, that is part of the joy too, is that, you know, and we, everyone, I, you know, I don't care what you claim your faith is or lack of faith, we can't help but see the beauty in what's been given us. Now, I know there are um, things on our earth um, that aren't so beautiful but that wasn't God that was us that was our fault so we praise him and we glorify this beautiful creation or I hope you do anyway I do all right now I'm going to show you how I am going to go a little overly dark in value with these clouds because I'm going to go back and pale it out a bit but I do need more dark to get that drama in certain spots and notice how when I'm adding this darker value it's dulling out that higher chroma blue that I had put down. So it was okay that that blue was maybe a little too bold at first um, because I know I can go back over it and tone it down. And plus, you may have noticed um, single colors have no um, pizzazz. Um, part of what makes a painting beautiful is that beautiful play upon colors. So, you know, I, I didn't go in obviously and make all of these one particular cloud, one color, because it actually doesn't work that way. Even in real life, light is reflected and clouds and things and ground and trees and everything's going to have this beautiful play of light um, from everything that's around it, that's reflecting and refracting and um, just the whole prism of light, uh, the whole concept of light. Uh, plays upon um, everything in our visual field. All right, that's a, a beautiful neutral um, Terry Ludwig pastel um, that I wanted a little bit more of that. It's kind of like a neutral lavender, maybe a warm lavender. And it's warmer, so that's why I am using it a little bit closer to the sun. Now, I wouldn't use it right up next to the source of light, but notice I'm not going to I might use some of that for those wispy clouds later because the sun is going to be hitting some of those. But I'm keeping um, it to represent those clouds um, that are a little thicker. You know, the sun, where the brightest part is going to be, you're not going to see much of clouds at all. If you look in the reference photo, there's like a big mass of light. But some of those clouds that you start to see um, underneath it, notice they're not that cool color and they're not super dark. They're a warmer, more paled out neutral color. So that's why I'm using this pastel to represent those clouds that are way back there closer to the sun. And, you know, I don't know, I'm, I'm assuming they must be probably pretty thick clouds to be showing up that far away. Um, but I'm obviously not going to paint them with as dark of a value because they're closer to the sun, the source of light. Um, now, I'm using a little bit more of this even warmer, a little bit darker value purple, um, uh, again, to capture some of those other clouds that are getting a little closer to me. Um, and so I wanted the value to be a little bit darker to give it an illusion of being um, perspectively getting, getting closer to me. Now, these again, another example of how I put down a color that's a little bolder than I want and maybe even a little darker than I want. I, it, I definitely lighten that up as the painting goes on. But I know that I can do that, and I know it's going to create interest if I get a little bit of that boldness in there and then tone it down a little bit. It's going to be peeking through, I guess you could say, um, as, I, as I work. Okay, can you see now how um, everything is still very, very um, uh, nondescript? And uh, I mean, some may even look at this and go, golly, I don't even know where she's headed. But I'm in this, this point in the painting, um, really the whole thing, 
I'm kind of zoned out. I don't ever think to myself I'm painting clouds. Um, sometimes when I back up and I look at it, I want to see that they look believable as clouds. But when I'm close up and I'm in the zone, as I call it, I'm literally just following color and value rules and uh, the rules of nature. And I kind of zone in on the particular area I'm working on and uh, see if I've got it correct with how how things would work in real life. Um, I hope that makes sense. So now I'm dulling that color out, like I said again. And then sometimes when I have a particular color of value in my hand, I might as well uh, utilize it um, in other areas since I've already grabbed it and got it. So what I'm doing is those darker clouds I put in, see how I'm dulling them out with that neutral, a uh, little bit lighter value. I'm starting to make these clouds more believable by uh, by blending using the pastel. And for this entire painting, I don't think I blended anything with like a tool or my hand. I use the pastel to blend and that's what's gonna give those clouds that wispy feel. Now I've zoomed in a little bit closer to kind of show you what I'm talking about. These are gonna be some of those obviously thick clouds that are way back there on the horizon and the source of light is closer to it. So they're not gonna be as dark um, and they're not gonna be cool because they're closer. So that's why I got this really warm neutral um, because these, uh, these clouds are definitely gonna be darker in value because they're thick clouds, uh, but they're going to be not like the, the dark value clouds that I have way in the front. Are you seeing that? You know, they're, they're cooler I mean, I'm sorry, they're warmer in color temperature and lighter in value. So it really makes them look like they're far away. What if I took that dark, darkest color I used before and tried to paint those clouds that color? You will have blown your illusion. All of a sudden, like say I made those clouds I'm painting right now similar to the color of the trees or the value of the trees. I mean, forget it, all of a sudden it, it looks amateurish and it's not a believable painting at all. So again, just keeping the rules of nature in mind, how things behave. Once you start to get that and you start to do enough painting, it you don't even think about it anymore. You just see it and you know, oh, okay, I've got to grab this particular value, you know, or this particular color. And uh, it becomes um, just second nature to you. It's, you're not even thinking anymore. And that's really when painting starts to get fun, you know, is when, when you can zone out, like I say, and you just start really enjoying it. And I often love to put on music while I'm painting and just um, relax. There's a peace to it. There's work to it too, of course. Sometimes I'm, and when I've been standing and painting, um, you know, uh, I forget how tired maybe my feet or my shoulder or whatever is getting because you're having so much fun. Um, and by the way, I know this is real time. The, the whole painting ended up taking, oh, probably two hours or less. Um, and, um, you know, uh, not all at one time. I, I <laughs> believe me in my life, I have to walk away. Um, but anyway, this is where now I am getting in. I, I put in a lighter value, but now this is the sun, okay, or where the sun is illuminating the closest part. And as I said in my little demonstration, I'm not drawing a circle. The sun is up in there somewhere and it's so bright you can't even see um, the shape of it. Now, I'm being a little cautious here because that value is going to be, it, this is kind of like a little color note for me. That's gonna be too light right there. I already know it. I'm, I'm extending it a little too far, but I'm gonna um, darken the value a bit and see, um, I'm getting in now, I'm getting in some of this darker value. It's very warm, but it's darker in value than that really light value I just put down. So this is going to be some of the other brilliant light kind of mingling with the lightest light of the sun. And I'll most likely use that one to go back to that little part to the left there where I, I got it too light. Okay. So this is just kind of that play of light. Yep. See, there I go. I knew that was a little too light there. So I've got to darken the value. And I hope you can see that that is definitely a darker value yellow than that uh, yellowy white that I put down before. Now this, I'm keeping a real light touch because I can see that's too light right there. And so now I just grabbed an even darker yellow. Okay, we're getting more like a 
uh, leaning, getting more red in that yellow than the previous one. And so notice how I'm gradually um, radiating out in warmer and um, darker tones, okay? Uh, the color is continuing to stay warm, but it's getting darker in value the further I get away from the sun. And um, you wanna keep that in mind as you work. Now, this is back to my little example that I, and see how I'm darkening that one too? I realize that's still a little bit too light. This is back to my little example that I did with the little illusion, um, little graphics that I put in there. Because right now, if you look at the reference photo and you look at the clouds that are up towards the top of the, um, the top rim of the of the little piece of paper cut out there there's like some pinkish looking clouds at the very top that are almost over your head um, there may be a tendency to grab a real light pink or or yellow and oh the sun's shining up and hitting them and as soon as i do that if i put that up there you would see if i took that lightest yellow i used just earlier and put it up to the top oh my gosh it's going to stand out like a sore thumb so that value that's up at the top clouds up there it appears light because it's next to darker values but it's not as light as you think okay so that's why keeping this gentle touch and um, keeping in mind that value is dependent upon what's surrounding it surrounding value and surrounding color all right i hope this is sinking in all right and again the more you do this um, the better uh, the more it'll make sense and the easier it all gets, okay? So I'm doing, um, uh, I think, is this called like, I think the term might be fractionated. It's like a fractured sky where I'm just laying color next to each other and it creates energy and movement. And I am I am actually uh, referencing the reference image um, in general, but I'm going outside of the, uh, what's exactly there to a degree i'm i'm getting more creative with color obviously and um i am adding some more um maybe more little highlights where i i think they could be that might not be showing i wanted to really make those look like clouds down there um rather than in the reference photo it was a little um i don't know muted looking you couldn't really see anything um, so i'm giving a little bit more detail as to some of those background clouds i want the interest that's another point i wanted to make where's the interest in your painting um you don't want it well for for impressionistic painting anyway you don't want every part of your painting to be so detailed um, i've seen some beautiful um what's it called photo realism um where oh my gosh you would think it was a photograph looking at some of the artwork but um for my style i like impressionism more um, you want to um, invite the viewer in to look at what you thought was the most interesting things in the painting and gently lead their eye around to explore and enjoy it. And for me, that sun and that just brilliant uh, ball of light back there, it was just that it was just beautiful in the actual sky when I saw it. And so that's where I'll have, you know, I know things in the distance typically lose detail as they go back. And while it's not super detailed, I wanted it to have the emphasis. So there is a little bit more detail there. The eye will bring in and see that, and hopefully I will control the detail and the color and the value in a way that will just make it very pleasing to the viewer. All right, I'm going to paint a little bit here, add the music, and keep in mind the things that I've talked about um, as I'm painting. Now for the for the real painting warrior here, I know a lot of you may not watch the whole video, but I know there are some of you who, that's why you're here. You're here to learn, you wanna get better. And so uh, I'd recommend to watch the whole video um, and then practice uh, maybe some smaller paintings with some of these things in mind. All right, enjoy the music and maybe I'll be back in in a little while.
I'm zooming in here so you can get a better idea of how I am approaching this landscape, especially the far distant landscape. Uh, like I mentioned before, I want the land to reflect some of the color that's going on in that sky and some of the light. You know, of course, that way back there is where that sun is the brightest. So I'm going to give the land a little bit more brightness and a little bit more color intensity. You don't want to get too crazy with this, but it will create just a little subtle interest instead of it all just being kind of a boring, monotonous landscape. So I'm adding little bits of blue. Um, of course, the warmer tones by those trees um, in, the, in the background there by the underneath the sun. And then the colors are going to gradually cool as they get closer to me. Um, for example, I'm adding purples in the shadows here of these trees rather than oranges because, you know, they're they're further from the sun and they're more in the shadow. Um, same thing with the other side. So anyway, that's in general my approach to the grassy part of the landscape. So I'm finishing this up and I really hope and pray that you learned something and that you'll try some of these techniques and that you'll get outside, enjoy the beauty of the sky. And I hope you'll come back and visit Monet Cafe and enjoy your own little virtual art studio from the convenience of your home. So blessings in art and in life, and of course, happy painting. <laughs>